Hello there, everyone. Welcome to Movies Are Real for the month of August 2019. Summer is ending. Fall is here, baby. Thank God. Not yet, but kind of is. Uh, this is the movie podcast where we discuss the movies of the month prior and what we're looking forward to the next month. I am George. I'm here with Ryan Lance, who's looking over the show notes like a scholar. I am a <laughs> professional podcaster. Mm-hmm. Is that the first time you opened the show notes since I sent them to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, the person who creates the show notes for this show. It's true. According to Ryan, I do a crap ass job sometimes. Uh, hey, you know what? <laughs> Just because I... I don't know every anime that's coming out. Like <gasps> that penguin anime is available to rent on Amazon. I just thought about penguin. that. The, yes. the one where there's penguin the peng- highway. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just a bunch of penguins just invade this Japanese town. It looks amazing. It looks amazing, it great. and also a little too horny. Hmm. <laughs> There's a scene that was a little horny. I'll, I'll just isn't say there a, man, we're getting ahead of, Isn't there a new Trigger anime movie coming out? Yes, I think I got tickets for that. Is, <laughs> My yeah. little brother got me tickets for that. Oh, really? Yeah. I, I have not seen the trailer. We're also watching Millennium Actress if you want to come with us, maybe. I, anyway! I want to see that movie real bad. <laughs> I don't know what we're talking about. Uh, anyways, we're not here to talk about anime, I don't think, this month. Uh, mm. Movies. The end of the summer. Uh, not, it certainly feels, man, I thought we had a lot more to talk about, but also, was, was Fast, uh, was Hobbs and Shaw this month? Hobbs and yeah. Shaw was this month. Yeah, we didn't see that. No. That was the biggest movie. This we didn't see the Fast Kitchen. Fast and Furious super combo. We didn't uh, see the kitchen. Because I heard it was bad. Apparently it's horrible. <laughs> yeah. Which is very, bu- which I is- think the box office is still obsessed with Lion King. If, mm. if. If I'm remembering the last time I checked that. Well, Spider-Man got re-released. Spider-Man did get re-released, but I don't oh. think... I Well, that came out at a bad time because they had that whole, like... It, he's yeah, it was literally... Mark. Literally, the tweet went up like 40 minutes after the news yeah. broke. The Hollywood Reporter story went up. So I don't think people are really excited to Yeah, enjoy that, that movie. so it was like, damn... Although I will have a side note, I'm actually ecstatic that <laughs> Spider-Man is no longer. I know. Like, if, if anyone's cinematic. happy, I thought, of you. I, I thought of you as well. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm so happy that I'm going to see a Spider-Man movie that's not him sucking the cock of Tony Stark. Thank God. Yeah, I was There's like been five movies. One billion dollars. One billion dollars. One billion dollars. That movie is okay. Mm-hmm. But Me. Jake Gyllenhaal, though. Jake Gyllenhaal is okay. You know what Whoa. I mean? No, like, what's some spice? I'm like, he oh. is okay. He is A-okay. He is A-okay. But the point being, we have a, we have not the, a very, like, maybe a, I don't know how to describe it. Not a lot of highs, not a lot of big movies here, but there's definitely some quality here. Uh, the first one we're talking about here is The Farewell, directed by Lulu Wang. This was a movie that, I didn't know it was coming so quickly, because mm-hmm. uh, I, I but the, like it was Lu Wang first told this story on This American Life. She said she was gonna make it into a movie, and then we were at a, the Alamo Draft House, like, oh, that movie's coming out now. Uh, it is based on a true story of her life that her grandmother was diagnosed with cancer, and that she had was it a, was it three months or yeah, something, something to like live, that, yeah. something to live. Um, but the family decides that the well, her family is Chinese. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then they they decide that we're not gonna tell her, um, and that your was it, I think it's your brother like cousin something like yeah, that. Yeah, her cousin. cousin. It was her cousin. Yeah, your cousin's gonna get married. Like a foe, a foe wedding to get the yeah. fa- as an excuse to get the family together, together so we can all you know say bye to, say bye to grandma. Yeah, she's probably gonna die because she's probably gonna die. Uh, and Aquafina here it plays the role of Lulu Wang, mm-hmm. uh, and Aquafina, of course, being raised in America, uh, not traditional. She's like, "You guys are out of your fucking mind. This is illegal <laughs> here." Yeah. Um, and so the story is about someone who's like incredibly close to their grandmother and knows that they don't have much time left, but can't for the family. Uh, she can't say anything. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I personally really, really liked it. I'm, I, it's weird. I'm not over the moon about it, but it's probably one of my favorite movies of the year. Mm-hmm. But I'm not like, I'm not going to be here gushing about how incredible it is. I was just like, it's just like you, you described Brigsby Bear as being so nice. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how I describe this movie. It's, I would, I would agree with that. This is a very like nice, sweet, wholesome I believe this movie is rated PG too, mm-hmm. which is so. like I was throw I was blown away. Like that's like a 
Pixar. This is like a beautiful Pixar movie right now. This is right. This like is like a, a short, this, long, like, like made into like an hour and thirty minute. Yeah, movie. this is a this is a very <laughs> wholesome, sweet, generally like funny experience. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't really know what else to really say. It's also been a while. Yeah, I saw it twice. I saw you it. Again. I also saw it twice. Yeah, God, you guys. <laughs> Kara, what did you think of it? I really liked it. And uh, I really liked Aquafina's performance in it because I don't really know much about her. I didn't. She plays. I mean, like in the Alamo, little like snippet before that, she plays very animated, very loud yeah, character. Yeah, she seems like she's she comedic relief most of the time. For yeah, yeah, she's I also a rapper. Yeah. So it was cool to see her bring a really uh, down to earth, yeah, yeah like, very normal performance like this. Yeah, and I, re- I think she was the main thing that i liked about the movie like all of her monologues and when she was getting emotional with her mom that was my favorite scene when when she's on the floor yeah. when they're looking for the earring oh yeah i mean to be fair the person who likes the grandma is also fantastic oh, she's, she's an adorable so woman she's very good yeah <laughs> um yeah for me i think it was weird that having because it's weird someone like when you see a movie based on a novel um, like, you know, like what's going to happen is things are a little bit different, mm-hmm. but it's weird that someone tells you the story because Lulu Wang, it was a podcast. So she tells you the story about her life. And because it's just like someone telling you, it feels a little bit more intimate mm-hmm. for me than a book. I don't know why, but it was weird. Like having so much of the small things that she mentioned be in the, in this fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think, I guess that may... And I guess what I have to say about that, and it didn't hit me until right now, is that I think it works so well because it didn't feel like a dramatization of real life. Mm -hmm. It felt like it, like real life. They felt like real life. Like the way, like, again, like the way she told, tells the story, this doesn't feel too far off of like how I had imagined in my head this would go down. Uh, I didn't think they'd actually get the dang dog (laughs) to sing. Um, what was it, Ellen? Ellen? Ellen, Ellen? Yeah. <laughs> My one critique of this movie, they really heavily advertised that dog. Right? They did. <laughs> and the dog was in one scene. Yeah. They made a, they made a, a plushie of it, yeah, right? Yeah. Don't get me wrong. That's a great dog. I just don't understand why they didn't use it more. Like, you had the dog. They had that dog. <laughs> just, it just blows my mind here. Five out of ten, garbage. That was just, <laughs> that was just someone at 824 marketing me like that dog right that there. Dog right there. <laughs> That's our new Black Phillip. <laughs> Got him. Black <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's really good. And I think for me, also personally, like <laughs> Ryan and I were talking about this off mic, but you as are. someone who's like distant from family and is like recently coming, like I recently been like talking to my family more, and it's weird that you realize like. You take some of the older people in your life or in your family for granted a little bit. At least I did. Like, I realized, like, like my grandma, like, I saw her recently. It was like, oh, I'm coming for Christmas if God allows it in Spanish. But, you know, and it's like, oh, you're old. That's right. <laughs> it's like, you know, life yeah. life happens. Um, And so it hits, it hits hard, but it doesn't it, – the movie itself isn't trying to fucking come at you real hard. Just the reality of it. Like, yeah. it's not, again, it doesn't feel like a dramatization. Other than, like, the part when they're leaving, like, yeah. it's sad, but it's also sad in, like, a in a very, like, real way. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, I've been in situations when I see friends that I haven't seen for a while, and, like, we just got to leave, and that's just emotional in itself. So, like, it's not hard to imagine when you're crying a little bit on a taxi ride. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I like the ending, uh, I guess not, well, I don't know. How to spoil, but I didn't expect them to end it the way they did, um, because like I, I thought they would have shot more of what happens after the wedding, mm-hmm. because in like when Lulu Wang talks about it, like oh yeah, like life went on and whatever the hell. Um, but yeah, it's really good. Um, like I said, I'm not gonna, I'm not the type. Of, this is one of my favorite movies of the year, but it's not one I would gush about. I just like write a screed on why it's fantastic like it's, it's just really really good um i don't know anyone else to say anything else on it as someone who's only seen it once uh i'm i'm losing track of a bit of it but i completely agree with like all that it's a very heartwarming remind reminds me a bit of my family i didn't have i've never had that same experience as like i've as we talked off mic you and i have two different kind of yeah extended, totally we have two different kind of extended families but it reminded me of some of the people in the extended family that, you know, I did have uh, more positive relationships with 
um, who, who are now since gone, and that 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 kind of got to me a bit, um, because that is you know the central like core of of this film, um, but yeah. And it's weird, like the funny, a lot of the comedy in the movie comes from like the awkwardness of like the very reality that's kind of the fact that this is a true story and it actually happened was the game of not trying to crack mm -hmm. and the way people like <laughs> dance around it to not crack. Like it's sad, but it's also like kind of funny. Um, the entire time the grandma's just like, why are you so sad? Come yeah. on. <laughs> uh, like the part like where. Um, <laughs> Lulu Wang's character, uh, Billy is her name in the movie, yeah. mm -hmm. um, when her uncle, yeah, her uncle is taking her to the hotel, and the uncle is saying, like, you can't cry, he's like, I know, you can't bubble it up, like, he's, like, just it's, building himself he's up, it to himself, himself, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and it's funny, but it's also, like, you know, it's sad, huh? yeah, this is definitely real, real good, real, real, real good, um, the next movie we got here, uh, I, am I the only one who saw this? No, we all saw it. Yeah. Or we all saw it together. Did we? Yeah. I'm terrible at this. <laughs> this, is, this happens again. This happens all the time. Um, scary did, stories to tell in the dark. Did anyone actually see this movie, actually? Yeah. <laughs> I read this book. Oh, oh this great oh. book. I love this. Yeah, give us a quick book talk. Uh -huh. Right now we're talking about a book on the movie podcast. Uh -huh. crazy. Uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. In the year of our Lord 2019, they decided to make an adaptation of the Scary, Star scary Stories to Tell in the Dark books by Alvin Schwartz. Um... Yeah, so this one is not directed by Guillermo del Toro, as the marketing may have tell, uh, maybe lead you to believe it, is but directed by Andre Orvidal? That sounds right to me. Uh, I don't know what's up with that. Oh, my guy. Does anyone know where that comes from? He's, uh, it's uh, Norse. Oh, okay. See, that makes sense. So, yeah, so this is trying to tell, weave all the small stories from the scary stories, like, series into like a narrative mm -hmm. where they find well i guess there's this cursed house the spooky, haunt, house. spooky <laughs> house so the family there is like whoa and there is the lady who like uh she fucking tell the stories in a book and they kept it locked up and all that uh, because she was a scary albino she was scary um yeah also watching this for some reason i completely forgot about the haunting of hill house the show mm -hmm. until i watched the, oh yeah that was a show that was kind of like this <laughs> anyways that's a side tangent um that's a good show it is a very good show and i was like man it's been so long i completely erased it i, I might still enjoy it if i just watch it fresh <laughs> again um so yeah i i think i don't know how you actually i want to hear y'all feel about it because i was pretty middling on it yeah i think it was and people really great. liked it and i don't really? I think you kind of feels I, like I a think Cartoon Network movie. It seems. Oh, <laughs> I think it's strong suits are the imagery. Totally. And I mean that's just because they they dedicated lifted the imagery from yes, the books and they committed to it. Yeah, and that's great, and that's iconic. But I think the the like you said the narrative of the kids with the lady in the basement and the book and yeah. the stories being written in real time it wasn't. I didn't think it was necessary, and it wasn't really yeah. good. I was imagining that this movie would be better served as, as like a, yeah, as like a creep show type of thing, yeah. where it's like here's the scary story book, and there's a big robed skeleton man. No, <laughs> I thought that would be great, but I mean that's probably not the easiest thing to totally. sell as a big blockbuster. But... Yeah, so... I mean the movie. To be fair, the movie looked kind of like it didn't look that expensive. No. The movie looked kind of cheap. And that's not to say, like, the actual, like, the art and stuff seemed, like, shitty. It just seemed like they were doing an incredible job with the resources that they were given. Yeah. To me, that's what... And, I mean, some of it wasn't great. Like, that, the, the, what's it, the, the guy the that was called, man? Yeah, like, he, he, yeah, he didn't look bad, great. But a lot of it looked fine. A lot of it was a little too obviously CGI, but... Like the jangling man? Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, how did you feel about this? Yeah, didn't didn't not not my jam, man. Not my, <laughs> like I was pretty like that was fine. Like leaving. that's how I and felt too. And then as like time has gone, and I've thought about, it, I was like, man, that was not great. Mm -hmm. because I've I've been reading like I've been trying to read like positive reviews on it, and a lot of people like, that. hey, this is this is a great like child's like introduction to horror. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, totally. No, I no, I completely you disagree, disagree with that. Oh. Completely. Yeah, I think there's way better like 
ways you could like show a kid horror. I mean, there are and, like singular episodes of Goosebumps the television show that are better than this movie. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I exactly. think Stand in the Basement the episode is better like, than this, this entire is, movie. This is a PG thirteen horror movie, right? Yeah. Right. So. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. not R. That's for sure. No, it's yeah. definitely not R. But there's so many. There's dozens of <clears throat> PG thirteen horror movies that I think would do a better job like introducing this to kids because it just doesn't like have any like real flow to it especially like as it gets going like you're thinking like hey maybe stuff will like happen but nothing i just don't i don't get like the flow of it because it like sets up for like a few characters like their stories like for uh the pro jared character no oh, wow <laughs> all right for the for the for the school boy that was who, the scariest part of the movie for the, for the bully that, character who I... looked uh, like uncanny like pro jared <laughs> um he was messing with the scarecrow and ryan yeah. leaned over to me and he's like this guy's got some big pro jared energy and i was like oh great <laughs> And then for like the the preppy girl who I don't understand how she was related to her brother in any right, way, in yeah. any circumstance, like they both had like a build up to like their scary stories. Everyone yes. else, it just happened. That's yeah. true. Like for um, like for um, her brother, like just that l- woman just showed up in the hallways of the, of the hospital. Yeah, that was. And it yeah, was like that's true. Okay, and like the idea of it, like they. Like, the bit was good, but they didn't really... But I didn't... It also also didn't fit fit with the story itself. No, no, not at all. Like, Uh, that was actually kind of a comedy story. She's just scary. Yeah. (laughs) And then for um, the the character, the... uh, What was his name? The... The guy who likes the girl? Yeah. Uh, Which one? The one who gets the, the toe in the soup? Or I forgot about Toe Soup. Team. Yeah, because he disappeared. Toe in the to- Soup was Augie. I totally I forgot Toe oh, yeah, Soup. I completely forgot Toe And then the there's the guy. really attractive Latino man. Yeah, that's who I was thinking um, about. That scene annoyed me because he was just like, they just explained like the backstory to me like, Oh, when, when I was a kid, oh, um, yeah, they did, there right. was this kid first where the really scary was called the Jaily Man. And then like he shows like, blah, I'm <laughs> the Jaily Man, blah, I have been killable. It's like, okay. But the dog was barking me, Doty Walker. That was cool. Well. Also, <laughs> why didn't you just tell her like I left the toe over there? It was in the soup. <laughs> like, what? Why do you? Why do you run? Like, just tell her it's, it's right there, or leave the yeah, house. We'll get a corpse walking down your hallway. Yeah, and see how Ryan. brave you are, Ryan. I fucking she just walks there, just punch her in the face, <laughs> just trip her. How's she gonna get up? Take her, her other toes. <laughs> Take <laughs> her other toes. <laughs> but like, would you agree that it kind of feels like a Cartoon Network sort of R.L. Yeah, Stein no, movie? It, it had mostly ghostly, starring mostly ghostly. Emily, whatever her face was. No, that was from that was, Montana. That was the haunting hour. The haunting Don't think about hour. it. Don't think about it. Yeah, that was a good movie. <laughs> yeah, that's probably better than this. That's probably better. Also, I really didn't like the because they were trying. Like, I didn't like the lead. Also, the yeah, oh, the, the I didn't. Girl. I didn't yeah. like her. I didn't. I didn't like their like. They tried to like explain like why you know she's able to do this magic, and they have this weird like side thing where they go into like black magic, but like it was like this slave that they had who apparently did, like, oh yeah magic. that was, that was and so I was sweet. like this doesn't feel right. Did and Guillermo kind of, produce the he know about this? Yeah, and like all right, and like he wrote it or something or like was one of the like primary writers like this doesn't feel right why are we talking about black magic? i mean they did like pitched it a story but then like in the credits it was like he was a pro- lead producer on it yeah and then i forget what else i think else. he wrote like this screen- idea man creative fellow he was like, Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> <laughs> he, he did, like the screen treatment so like yes he wrote, like the summary yes. of like all right uh these kids find a house and there's a book with scary stories Fantastico, incredible. <laughs> Write the exact... check out to Guillermo. That's G E. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I really did like it. Also, didn't do anything. And also, yeah, it was weird. <laughs> they didn't do anything, and like that woman was clearly a slave, but they never said they never said slave. it. Also, black magic. Whoa. Yeah, I, was uh, like, I didn't get that. Like the mo- which was weird. They never wrapped that up at all. They, no, which is weird because the movie like did a, I feel like a decent job talking about like racial discrimination for that time, like for the most part. They kind of danced through. It's not as direct as Shape of Water. No, but, yeah. well, no, it could. It really could have been for like a. Well, I maybe it could have been more. for like, a kids been. movie, but uh, 
Yeah. I, I mean, th- th- like, people are racist towards the Latino kid. Yeah. Straight up. Yeah, straight up. Yeah. And, like, you don't really see that in something that's marketed for kids. Yeah. And, like, I think, I feel like you could have done, if, if they're at least dancing around the idea, why didn't they say, like, this one was a slave? Like, that's weird to me. Like, they're already the bad guys. Why not? Yeah. Why not, <laughs> why not give them a slave? Yeah. Thomas Jefferson owned 600 slaves, and he is on a mountain. <laughs> okay, let's just let's just deal with reality right now. Okay. Um. <laughs> yeah, I know. From a man who's recently I, I, visited I, I, Mount Rushmore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. On a side tangent. <laughs> Mount Rushmore sucks. <laughs> It's nothing but old white people be like, oh, if so, totally, there's so much walking involved with Mount Rushmore. <laughs> now, now, if those were four Hokage, <laughs> no, no, we now maybe I can. <laughs> Look, all I'm saying is, none of the Hokage were problematic, okay? <laughs> uh, maybe the second Hokage. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I agree with you a lot of points, but I don't think I dislike about, it. About Mount Rushmore? Too... <laughs> no. No, fuck you. Mount Rushmore was great. <laughs> um, yeah, it's... It's the novelty that it even exists is clearly this was like, all right, you won an Oscar. Yeah. What do you want? I was like, if you can make one thing, <laughs> what do you fucking want? What do you here, want? Bro? I was like, you're gonna have to pay for most of it, but we'll distribute it and we'll we'll market it for you. Um, this felt like that. Um, and it's I'm I'm happy it exists. It's a cool experiment. Like it could have been worse. Mm-hmm. It's neat. It could have been better. Also, I would have preferred yeah. the anthology. I think as well. Yeah, that would but. Be cool. I don't know. I think that was just too obvious of an idea, so they decided. It to might have been. That's true. Maybe make it, you know, a carbon copy of Goosebumps. Yeah, exactly. But it's, more, it's more marketable. Yeah, for sure. Um, and but then the problem with that is like, if you do that, then you'd have to have reach out to people to maybe do each one, and you know that a bunch of people would want to be involved with this project, yeah. and then it'd be like, a, oh, I'd hate to have people want to be involved with our project. Yeah. <laughs> what a what a hassle to have people want to be. Involved. I'm just saying, you only have so many people, so much time to do it. <laughs> um look the there's plenty of into the dark directors who are not doing <laughs> anything right now it's <laughs> yeah, true it's true uh, am i the only one who kind of thought that the overarching narrative of the girl in the basement it kind of made me think of ouija one yeah <laughs> that's also yeah. what it reminded me of I and like, then i run mm, i forgot about ouija, ouija movie was good <laughs> that ouija 2 was pretty good yeah, was right pretty, right it was pretty good it was all right it was fine it's pretty good. Anyways, that's scary stories to tell in the dark. Uh, it's a it's a cool thing that exists. That's and all. It has some fun moments. I think they did the spider bit very good. The spider bit was. They good. did it very well. I like the spider bit and the, the coloring bit. was good as well. Like just the imagery was very good. They as, really... as someone who loves red in movies, they did that good. very well. They sure did hire someone who looks a lot like Pro Jared. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's had that porn blog for years, <laughs> Carrie. He's had it for years. Well, I guess I'm not as in depth as you are. No, like I saw him promoting the porn blog when I was like, like in high school, like years ago. He's had an episode of iCarly. Yeah, he was on an episode of iCarly. He was. Why? I don't know. <laughs> Who was, else do you get? For he was like, iCarly? I think his role was like some shitty gamer, angry guy, or whatever. Uh, the fuck. Yeah, he was. <laughs> He was on some. I don't. Wasn't he was on some Nickelodeon thing? I honestly don't know if it was Arcade or not, but he played like himself. He might have been in another thing, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Weird. But all the all the like Nickelodeon live action shows are made by the same guy who is yes. like, so problematic. Yes. Oh, is he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Um. He has a foot fetish. I mean, Quentin well, Tarantino he, has he, one. He's yeah, but like, inherently problematic. But like on he put, no, but he puts his foot fetish in his children's TV shows. Oh. So he's. Fetishizing child children's feet. feet. Yes, that's a little weird. Yeah, a little weird. <laughs> well, this isn't the call out podcast. Right? Yes, it is. <laughs> um, you know what, Pro Jared? Fuck. <laughs> I like to call out Brian Lynch. No, <laughs> he's, like, he's a big bitch. <laughs> Uh, Did he do anything wrong? Yeah, he's a bitch. <laughs> Boo! Brian Boo. Lance disrespects Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> the, amaz- oh. the amazing Jonathan documentary. Uh-huh. This is the thing you saw, Carrie. I watched it. It's a it's a Hulu. So it's a documentary, exclusive. not like a what is it? A biopic. It's a no, it's a documentary. Okay. And it's a unique documentary because it's it starts at like the first. 45 minutes to an hour are focusing around the amazing Jonathan, who, if you don't know, is a stand-up comedian who integrates magic tricks into his act 
and he does some fun stuff with them and subverts what you might expect from a traditional magic show and sort of makes fun of magic and also brings people on stage to fuck with them. And it's a very, very good comedy special. It's hilarious. I remember I watched it as a child and it was when I was really into like Chris Angel and all those street magicians. So I was like, Oh, magic. I love magic. And then his special was on and there's a part where he, uh, has those interlocking rings and he like puts it on a guy's tongue and then the guy is like a plant part of his act and he rips his tongue out and I was like, Oh my God. <laughs> so I you thought it was worked. really happening. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it worked on 10 year old me. Yeah. But this documentary focuses, it starts off with the, the director, Benjamin, uh, making the documentary about the amazing Jonathan because he has been diagnosed. I don't remember the thing that he's diagnosed with, but he's been given a, you've got a year to live type of situation. And so he's, this guy starts covering him, but then as the documentary goes on, things start to get fucky because there's like other documentaries being made about the same thing Mm. and jonathan starts being a less reliable subject Um. for the documentary and so then it kind of devolves into this guy scrambling and trying to be like what am i gonna make my documentary about and it's really interesting Interesting. it's it's like the the subject matter of the documentary lashing out and not wanting to be in the documentary anymore it is pretty good huh that makes that makes me more interested in that that's cool all right. It's fun. And it's good. Is that and like it's on Hulu. Uh-huh. It's a Hulu exclusive. Right, yes. As major fans of the Into the Dark franchise. <laughs> Dude, uh. Puka is such a good movie. I don't understand. It's one of the top three horror movies of 2018, some might say. <laughs> oh, yeah, we did. Some people might say that. Like me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and... Uh, but yeah, if if you're wanting a documentary just about the amazing Jonathan, this, not this might not be what you are looking for. But I thought it was an interesting documentary, and it did some things that I didn't expect, and it took some cool turns. <laughs> mm. And I think it's fun. I have to say, this may be the actual shortest episode of the show we've ever done. It could be because we're now in the last movie, and that's Ready or Not, directed by oh my god, somebody help me here, Matt, Matt Batanelli, Batanelli Open and Tyler. Gillette? Gillette. <laughs> like the razor blade. Yeah, the woke razors. The woke razors. Um, so yeah, this was a movie uh, was put out by Fox Searchlight. Um, woman is being married into a... a the, mar- is marrying a guy whose family is like the heir... Board game dominion. Board game dominion. Yes, <laughs> they are a board game... This is this is like the Monopoly family. <laughs> this is like the Monopoly... This is Hasbro. Mr. Hasbro. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Hasbro. <laughs> Uh, the Parker Brothers. The Mr. Par- and Mrs. Trouble. Mr. and Mrs. Sorry. Mr. Uh, what else? Mr. Candyland. Jonathan Katab. Anyway, there it is. Anyways, turns out they're crazy, and they made a deal with the devil. Uh, and then every <laughs> once in a while, when a new person has entered the family, they have to play a game where they fucking grab a card out of the box to play the game. Yeah, and usually it's a, a benign game yeah. like check. Right. The card or... is is like blank and you put yeah. it in the box and then it comes out with it's the a game. magic box. It's a magic box. Some sailor man, I don't even remember how it went, gave him the box. Feely and... Mealy. <gasps> oh man, that was good. That movie's going to be great when that Feely Mealy oh, fuck movie me. comes out. Anyways, yes. Uh so uh our lead character here played by Samara Weaving, is that is that yeah. the, okay? Uh, not Margot Robbie, uh, as her poor, poor reputation. That's her whole bit right now. That sucks. Um, but yeah, she pulls uh, to play uh, hide and seek. Um, and which is the only which bad is the card. only bad card, right? Which is they have to hunt the person who grabbed it so they can sacrifice them to the devil demon man. Yeah, Mister Baylo, Baylo, Mister Bay something. Um, <laughs> So yeah, it's it's really so it, the way it, it starts off and like oh the husband is cool and it goes in a lot of interesting ways. Um, this was a lot better than I expected personally. Yeah. This is a lot better than I expected. I feel that way too. Um, it's unfortunate that I think the trailer spoiled a lot of the best. That's part. true. The, a lot of the best punchlines are in the trailer. Yeah, it sucks, but it's very good. Uh, Ryan. I was not you did not see, see this, this one. Right? I was in Mount Rushmore. You were, I was Mount Rushmore. You were like, "Fuck you!" <laughs> I was like, "You're this were... guy owns slaves, people." <laughs> You're just standing next 
to the body with the sign. <laughs> hey, sheeple. Hey. hey. <laughs> Wake up. <laughs> uh, but yeah. He's, uh, no, he's like Zendaya from the first oh Spider-Man my. movie. <laughs> Did you have your Sylvia Plath t-shirt on? I should have. Damn it. <laughs> I should have. But yeah, it's it's a lot more gory than I expected, yeah. which is fantastic. Mm-hmm. It's really it, they have a lot of fun with what they're given. They don't take them because the, what I was worried was like the trailers make it seem funny, but is it too funny? Is it not horror enough? And yeah. are these characters? But it plays it very well, and I think the ending is fantastic. Mm-hmm. I really like the way it ends. Um, yeah, it's it's not really scary. No, I wouldn't call it scary. No, it's like kind of horror, but. Is it gory? It's, ho- it's, it's, it's very it's gory. gory yeah. yeah. There's a scene that made me think of the the nail scene from A Quiet Place when there was the fucking nail in the middle of the stairs oh, for no gosh. reason, but it was actually done well instead oh. of stupidly. I can't remember anything about A Quiet Place. Remember there was Some would there say was it was that... one of the best horror movies of 2018. Some would say And that. Hereditary was a piece of shit. Uh, yeah, uh, <laughs> Puka. Oh, no. uh, that part where she's dragging the laundry bag up the wooden staircase and she pulls a nail oh, yes. that was in the middle okay. of the stairs for yes. no reason and then she steps on it later. I remember now. Like if it was like a splinter... That would have made sense. Nope, it's an entire ass nail just in the middle of the stairs. Hurts <laughs> <Hurt, laughs> though. Well, too, well, but that's that. not as scary. Yeah, but, but yeah, yeah, it's it, it it realizes it's a ridiculous concept and it really goes with it. Mm-hmm. Um, it's really fun. I like it a lot. Uh, big surprise, honestly, for me. Yeah. Uh, because I didn't know about it until the trailers, and even with the uh, the trailers in the end were a little much because it just gave out a lot of the movie. Unfortunately, you're saying you're not a big Matt. Patelli, Olfen, and Tyler Razor Galette fan. That's true. But I mean, for a small horror thing, like, it got a pretty big push, I feel, which is good. Like, yeah. Was this a Blumhouse thing? No, no it wasn't. No. That's the other weird oh, thing. Really? <laughs> it's Fox Searchlight, so it's Fox's mm-hmm. independent oh, label. So Disney. It's yeah, oh, yes, yeah, so it's Disney. Oh, man. <laughs> it's, it's really fucked up how much that bums me out. I wish it didn't bum me out as what much. Do you mean? <laughs> it's just like. Oh man! Disney's gonna buy our podcast. How are you gonna feel about that? Oh, no. <laughs> We're gonna be on Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> listen to us talk shit about Lion King for <laughs> one an hour uninterrupted. Guys, maybe we should have watched an episode of the podcast before nope. we signed them off for six, a six-year contract. It's crazy, right? Um, but yeah, highly recommend Radio Now. I feel like that's one that's um, that's gonna be for a lot of people a great Netflix watch. Oh, that's sure. gonna be good because. I'm glad we watched it in a movie theater. Um, a great Disney Plus watch. A great, uh, Jesus Christ. Again, it bummed me out again. It's incredible how much it bummed Stop me out. Stop bumming George out. <laughs> uh, George capitalism. Isn't it great? It is great. We don't own Warner Media yet, though. That's it for August. Uh, September. Big one for you, Carrie. There's only one movie yet. Oh, Warner oh, Media's uh, favorite clown. <laughs> Pro Jared is best. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> no more pro Jared. We've hit our quota. We've done it. Jessica Chastain. Um, Bill Hader. Bill Hader. James McAvoy. James McAvoy. And that's all the people I ran out. Ran out. Um, Bill Skarsgård. Bill Skarsgård. Oh, oh, yeah, we know that. Um, Old Spice guy. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm sure the kids came back for a few more scenes. Mm-hmm. Did. They had a D age. They had a D age. Uh, Finn Wolfhard. Because he got too oh, tall. Oh, he got too tall. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! I think of that interview I read is like yeah, everyone looks the same except for Finn. He got really fucking tall. <laughs> so we had to shorten that guy out. Of it. Um, so yeah, it chapter two. Really excited. Really oh, weird. Uh, that's but next. Had two chapters. Is that next week or the week after? That's next week. When yeah. we're recording it, we're recording right we're now. We're recording it right now. Yes. Um, <laughs> Satanic Panic. It's a... Do we want to talk about it chapter two more? How's our? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I haven't seen it in a. Fucking minute! I rewatched it last week. I've seen it quite a few times. I've seen it once. I've seen it. You've seen it a lot. Twelve times, I think. You've seen it a lot. <laughs> it it is a movie that like I'm at my parents doing laundry and it's always on HBO and it's like all right, that's I'm like, not mad. That's like my house. Yeah, but remember you... when you came over and I was wrapping Christmas presents? <laughs> it's like halfway through it. <laughs> exactly. Good, good Christmas watch. Good, good Christmas wrapping movie. So here's the thing: aren't there? Didn't this get a movie? This movie get reviews super fucking early, and aren't people yeah. it got, not it got, on it? Uh, but it to be got, fair, like, the second part of it isn't the best part, in no. my opinion. Why I, is it so 
mean? <laughs> I think for I haven't read a whole lot, but from what I've read, a lot of people's being like, "Oh, the the charm is not there because there's no kids," and it's right. like. Well, yeah, there's no kids. What do you what do you expect? Bill Skarsgård to be like, hey, guys, it's me. No, he would not be like that because he's a clown. Am I thinking of? Hater. <laughs> Bill Hader. I, was like, I was like, I don't know what, what? the fuck. Bill Hater. Bill Hader. <laughs> Yeah. I've heard I've heard I have a few friends who saw this early and they were talking about how it is a lot of movie and it's a big weird movie. I like and that I'm though. fucking excited. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> it's almost three hours. Yeah. That's great. Jesus. Make it long. That first one was not that long, right? No, no it was. I don't was it? Remember. Yeah, it was like a little Man, over two, it was a little over two hours. I think the most I've, I the most I thought about it was in Pet Cemetery when there's that sign for dairy. <laughs> Uh, man. Welcome back to dairy. Yeah. No clowns. <laughs> Definitely no clowns here. Uh, Come yeah. to dairy. I'm no, so I'm. Excited. I'm very excited that it's because I haven't seen a whole lot from the trailers, but also the movie is two two hours and like fifty three minutes. Mm-hmm. Holy so there's, shit! <laughs> there's a lot of movie that I I'm haven't so seen. Fucking because the other trailers are like um the one scene of her return to the house, right. which is a very good very scene. Good scene. Um, and then My a, father joined the circus. <laughs> he wasn't a clown at all. <laughs> what? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's good. And then like the the other trailer, it shows them like getting back together, and then a little bit of him in that like haunted house thing. And the big tongue. The big tongue. Oh yeah, that thing. <laughs> you think that's that's a misdirection? What do you mean? Like, you think they're gonna CGI it to be something else? A dick. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. I don't think so. Because that tongue is like, that looks like a child's toy. <laughs> I don't know. This is a weird theory, but maybe. Yeah, I don't know. I just, I just feel like. There's going to be nothing that's just not in the movie at all, maybe. Oh. Oh, what if none of the trailers were in the movie? <laughs> what if the movie doesn't come out? <laughs> <laughs> well, although I do, my favorite part in the trailer is, um, it's like Bill Scar, but Bill Skarsgård, and like his like face is like peeling to be clown. And oh, he's like, and he's laughing. Yeah, yeah. I really like that. That's good. But I'm excited good. to see what that. My favorite part that. of the trailer is when they show that Paul Bunyan statue because I'm like, oh, it's that's gonna my, move. That's my favorite scene from the book, and I'm so excited. It's gonna be fucking ridiculous. Isn't Richie's fear of Paul Bunyan? <laughs> No. Oh, okay. Someone's fear is Paul Bunyan or well, that mean, statue, there, right? Richie, Richie isn't a fan of the statue. And okay. there may or may not be a scene where in the book when they come back to the town and they're doing a walk to try and remember everything that happened to them, Richie is standing below that statue and it comes to life and chases him down the street. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to happen. It's going to be awesome. I'm really excited. <laughs> Satanic Panic. This is a smaller horror movie that we just saw the trailer for. Um, As someone who's just seen the Hail Satan documentary, oh, that doc was good. This is offensive. <laughs> offensive to nice people. To me as a Satanist. To me as a Satanist. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, so, okay, I remember now. Hail Satan yeah, documentary. Yeah, Very good. Yeah, it's on Hulu. It's now, also apparently. on Hulu. I would highly recommend. Go that. to Hulu for some good docs. Yeah. Well, Owned by Disney. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I, I put this on the list because I saw a lot of people I follow on Twitter talking about it and how it was really good. And it basically is just a girl who's a pizza delivery person and shows up to her last delivery of the night and winds up getting taken by the satanic cult to be their sacrifice. And it looks pretty fun. Hilarity. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the goldfish. This is Finn Wolfhard in it, right? No, it's... Oh, oh, yes. Yes, it does, actually. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, the main guy is Ansel Elgort, everyone's favorite baby driver. This movie Mm. looks like a lot of bullshit. Yeah, it does. (laughs) I I know I've seen this trailer, but I can't It's the one where it's, it's him and his mom at an art museum oh, and, and, it blo- and it blows explodes. up and he steals that one painting because it was the one that his mom was looking at and then mm-hmm. it's like him through his life and he like meets the art there, it's and a, he meets it's Finn a, Wolfhart <laughs> yeah he meets Finn Wolfhart at some point it does seem like a lot It's it looks like it's one of those it's it based on a book yes. yeah it's based uh, on a it was very a very popular good, yeah, book yeah very popular book and when the promo for this started, Ansel Elgort started acting really weird on his Instagram, just posting like hundreds of selfies in a day. And I was like, I don't know what, this, I don't know what any of this means. But yeah, this movie looks 
I'm gonna watch it. All but... right, well, you'll be our correspondent. <laughs> I don't want to watch it. It's got a really good uh, perfume genius song in the trailer, <laughs> but that's it. Mm. Uh, what is three from hell on this list here? Hustlers. hustlers. Oh, hustlers. Sorry. Hustlers. Isn't that... Sorry, I forgot hustlers. <laughs> hustlers. Isn't that the Anna? Is no the Anne Hathaway a Rebel Wilson movie? Oh, that movie fucking sucks. That's also what I thought. That's oh. the hustle. Oh, that's the hustle. Okay. I I watched that movie last oh, week yeah, that's an as a thirst watch because oh. I love Anne Hathaway. She's very good. Holy fuck, that movie was stupid. That reminded me of what's that fucking Johnny Depp movie? Mordecai. Mordecai. <laughs> that oh, movie Mordecai. also oh. sucks. It's Mordecai energy. <laughs> Mordecai. <laughs> Mordecai probably hasn't aged well, has it? Mm-mm. Uh, <laughs> but there's there's parts of Mordecai that are kind of fun, and it's got a decent cast. Unlike but it's, the hustle. Uh, there's so there's two times that I laughed at this movie, and it was just Anne Hathaway saying stuff. <laughs> That's it. Rebel Wilson is so fucking annoying. Like I can't get over it. Like I want to like her because she seems like a fun person, but she's just so she, annoying. She's one of those comedians where, like, I think you'd be funny in real life. She's at like, an I've eleven never, all the time. I've yeah. never, I've never seen her in a movie where I've been like, they're really. She's in a uh, well. what? Uh, she's Jojo in Jojo Rabbit. Rabbit yeah. So she'll probably oh, bring a good performance yeah. there. Yeah. Hopefully. Um. Yeah, nah. so don't what watch is, the hustle so what is hustlers it's That's, i know it's got lizzo and uh oh, yeah and uh fucking oh my god what's her name hold on I'm cardi b that. it's got cardi b oh and it also has uh from fucking is it's it jenny on, the, jenny on the block j-lo is it lana, what is this lana <laughs> condor i don't want to hold on i think it's lana condor uh kiki palmer constance, constance Wu, Wu, julia styles Willie Reinhardt, Cardi B. But yeah, it's uh, a crew of savvy former strip club employees who band together to turn the tables on their Wall Street clients. And I, oh. yeah, that seems fine, but, well, you know, it, it, is, it, it seems what like, it is. It looks like a, a low key heist kind of movie. Shout out to JLo still being out here, I guess. That's what <laughs> I was like, man, you've been out here. Uh, All you need to know is it's a movie with Lizzo in it. Go watch. Poor she's Lizzo. probably in it for five seconds. Yeah, though. but I mean, you know. Chat to Lizzo. She's great. Incredible. Um, Three from Hell. New Rob Zombie movie. Oh. That's all you need yeah. to know. <laughs> Is his wife in this one? Probably. Yeah. I Does she know. have her tits out? Uh, uh, that's yes. That's a guarantee. <laughs> all I've seen from this is the poster, and it looks like every Rob Zombie poster. <laughs> See, so, that uh, looks like a Rob Zombie poster. Yeah. Three from Can Hell. Can confirm. Uh, sequel to House of a Thousand Corpses and The Devil's Rejects. What? <laughs> it says plot unknown. <laughs> <laughs> and you're sure that's coming out this month? I it saw is, it yeah. on the list. Yeah, it is. Bl- hmm. So no, there, but that's wait, getting no a, comparison. There's, there's an overarching plot between The Devil's Rejects. The and Devil's Rejects is a direct sequel to uh, House of a Thousand Corpses. Oh. The Devil's Rejects is a good ass movie. It's fucking good. Huh. I did not know. I did not know that his movies were sequels or had uh, like a because they don't say two. Yeah, Halloween is actually a sequel. Too. Oh, whoa! I never thought about that. But I know that there was a Rob Zombie cinematic universe. Is what I'm saying. I mean, there might be. I just know about House of a Thousand Corpses, which is not a good movie. I don't think. But I like The Devil's Rejects quite a bit. Um. I've heard a lot about this next movie. Ad Astra. Ad Astra. Not to be confused with Lucy in the Sky. <laughs> Uh, I've heard gonna be crazy. I've heard a lot. I'm of... fine. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Someone tell me the plot of this movie. Uh, Brad, uh, Brad Pitt's dad. Tommy Lee his... Jones is in space. Tommy Lee Jones is in space. He's Brad Pitt's dad. Uh, an astronaut travels to the outer edges of the solar system to find his father and unravel a mystery that threatens the survival of our planet. He uncovers secrets which challenge the nature of human existence and our place in the cosmos. Yes. So it's a fucking interstellar, interstellar ass. Too, yeah. So that's probably why I've heard but people be excited But it's Brad for. Pitt. And it's t- his dad is Timely Jones. Which makes sense, I guess. Yeah, I yeah. guess. Um, I don't like... I, I said I don't love space movies. <gasps> At least uh, a lot of space but, movies but have recently What about High Life? Uh, what about, about Jizz-filled movie? <laughs> Of this year. I know you really like that movie, Carrie. Yeah, it's a good movie. Yeah, I'm not a fan here, but Uh-oh. That's I like I like sad space movies. You know what I mean? I like I like movies where so, so space. <laughs> I like Moon a lot. 
Anyways, this next movie <laughs> is Rambo Last Blood, baby. Everyone's been saying you, we need another Rambo. I thought this movie. was coming out a lot, like a while from now, because I just yeah. You it. mean 1984 <laughs> when the other Rambo movies listen, came out? Listen, listen. Oh, Rocky Balboa was a good movie. <laughs> It's a good this, movie. Is a, this is Rambo, though. I, but Rambo First Blood was sad. He's, he was like crying for most of that movie. Um, so maybe he'll be sad in this one. That'd be fun. I don't know. That's all. Yeah, like, I don't know. Because Rambo Four was Rambo. nonsense garbage. That was just literally a drowning pool music video. Um, but I did. I thought this was because I just heard about this, so I assumed it'd be like later. You know. I just feel like the the target audience for this movie died five years ago like that is and that, what do you mean me. greg's sitting right there <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying greg is an old soul and by an old soul i mean he's like 84 years old <laughs> and i'm sorry to our studio audience but i don't understand what this okay so is it, is it playing it like dumb let me look at i'm looking at the poster right now it's pr- definitely not it is 100 percent not okay this kind of seems like it's not playing it like the rocky <laughs> balboa direction it is maybe going through the rambo four direction or rambo yeah just rambo whatever that rambo was um yeah you know i, I didn't know it was coming out so soon who is jonathan rambo what's his story so he was exactly. A, so he was a war. He came back from the war, right. and he's got PTSD. If I remember, he put correct. a bandana on. Yeah, um, he's very sad. Um, and now he's an old man. Yeah, I, I, that's all I know about it. There's that one video game that sucked where he punched a snake. Um, that sounds great, Ashley. Um, that's all I got. There's that one video that came out for the PS3 in 2014. That was weird. Um, <clears throat> Let contain this trend of movies. That are coming out well past when they probably. I thought have. this was already fucking out from the amount of trailers and ads I've seen. It. Oh, <laughs> Downton Abbey, baby! I want. We're going that, back. <laughs> remember <laughs> that joke in Iron Man Three, where Happy Hogan was really into Downton Abbey? No. I unfortunately do. That's the only. That's the only way. I thought. I thought that was a made-up show for the movie, and then I found out this was a real show. Now, people love Down and Abbey a whole lot. Yeah, apparently. It's one of the highest PBS programs ever created. They don't watch PBS. Well, that's because Down and Abbey's all they got. Um, Don't watch NPR. But the thing, my favorite thing about Down and Abbey is, the the movie, is that they, like Ryan said, they expect you to know, like, oh, fuck, Down and Abbey, (laughs) yo! (laughs) It's fucking ridiculous. The trailer is the stupidest thing What a do, baby! (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like I was listening to another podcast and they were talking about how ridiculous it is when because I don't know anything about the show but when the girl goes to the fucking hut of the guy it's like we need we need we need your help and he's like I'll be there in the morning and then they fucking cut to him walking up the fucking sidewalk and it's a shot from below and it just pans up and it's this fucking big bombastic Avengers ass music it's like he's coming back and I'm like who <laughs> the groundskeeper is what? This so much. <laughs> the trailer is ridiculous do you have enough cliches to get through the evening oh, if I do I'll come to you <laughs> oh, I'll I'm, really, word. I'm really surprised they weren't they didn't have to reuse Listen, that shot of Madam the, of Mary the, Talbot of is fantastic <sighs> Oh, like, yeah. It really feels like when, they just reversed when, the shot. When, they when, cut. This, when this trailer, I had seen this trailer like once or twice, and then we were seeing something at the Alamo, and it came on, and I leaned over to Ryan, and I was like, I want you to count the number of exterior shots of this house. There was like 11. It was ridiculous. It's like 11 <laughs> shots of like a minute long trailer. That's crazy. I forget how many seasons Down and Abbey was on, but those were like Probably a Probably too hot, much. It was like a hot minute. People swear about Down and Abbey being great. But it's again, it's funny because they refused. One, the series has been over for a while, so one, it is late. But also, they just refuse to give me any context for it. And <laughs> maybe I'm the close-minded one who thinks like nobody knows the fuck Down Abbey, and maybe people are fucking horny as fuck for Down Abbey, and I'm well, just a simpleton. But see, this is the cinematic event of, of the summer. Of the I thought like because the, the trend I feel lately is like bringing shows back as like a movie. I mean, lately it's been like cartoons, mm. but like you don't put those in theaters because people like who can, like if uh, you want to watch the Invader Zim movie, it's gonna be on Netflix. Oof, I don't. I'm good actually. <laughs> it's actually fine. Mm. 
don't say that much. I heard the Rocco one's very good. I never watched Rocco, uh, okay. but I, I I have seen clips um, because I was curious on like the the transgender stuff that they did, and that that was very good. It was generally yeah. funny. Um, but yeah, the Invader Zim movie is funny. Anyways, Downton Miss, Abbey, <laughs> uh, Lady Mary Talbot's great. I feel like Downton Abbey and the Invader Zim Enter the Florpus probably have the same same audience, same same, same yeah. energy really. <laughs> Anyways, so it that's two, September, I guess. So it's it, flash God, what forward. Is, if this was this month, what is next month's episode gonna be? It's just gonna be us talking about it chapter two. That's for true. An hour. I feel like we could talk about it chapter two for six hours. I'll do it. Yeah, we probably could. <laughs> Don't uh, challenge me. October is gonna be very good though. What do we got is in October, it? Ryan? October, we got Joker. <gasps> we got Jojo oh. Rabbit. We got The Lighthouse. <laughs> the I am we got not... Dr. Sleep. I'm looking forward to What's watching... What's that dress movie? Uh, December, I think. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to the Joker movie, but I am not I... looking forward to the online space I know. after uh... the Joker movie. I'm no, not looking forward I... to the takes. I... I was indifferent on the first Joker trailer, but this new one, I was like, you know what? This I'm sure that movie's going to be great. It's just the con the 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 fan base, the the people who I like we know. live in a society. <laughs> um, maybe jo- hopefully Joker's trick becomes bigger as a Twitter account. Uh, are you guys familiar with Joker's trick? No, it's a very good Twitter account. I highly recommend it. Uh, yeah, and we got the lighthouse in October. The lighthouse, yeah, oh, the Joker baby. Uh, <laughs> the lighthouse and Jojo Rabbit come the same day, and I'm hoping to God. That we could double feature that oh, shit. That would be amazing. We'd watch the two best movies of 2019 <laughs> the same night. That'd be great. No, that's going to be in December when we watch uh, Star Wars and Cats. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. That's going to be another great So I have feature. a question here. Yes. George has a question. Quack. I keep seeing advertisements for this new Terminator movie. Is Darth that not Fate? this year? No, it's this year. When? I think it's November. What, what kind of a time to put a Terminator movie? That's a weird spot for that. You know what? It's a weird spot for that. I've seen the first Terminator now. It's and. fine. Kind of sucks. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> Terminator 2, though. Look, like, if you're going to go back in time to fuck someone, like, don't make me your friends, Bob. Let me, let me see. These are the Terminator. It's just weird. Terminator 1 is, is like, gritty and real, man. No. Terminator 1 <laughs> could fucking happen, man. <laughs> Anyways. So... I'll probably watch Terminator 2 at some point. It can't. I the, 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 I feel like Sonic like the Hedgehog and the Terminator franchise have about the same energy because it's like, it's just so, every time people are like, oh, maybe this will be, man, Terminator Genesis fucking sucked. Holy shit. <laughs> Greg, our studio audience, me and him almost got, we got hushed for making fun of it live. <laughs> like this fucking dumb shit fucking movie. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Oh my god, that movie sucked so bad. The best thing about Terminator Genesis is that fucking the WWE had a promotion. They had Triple H come out in a Terminator fucking outfit. Anyways. The last time I got hushed in real time while making fun of a movie unrelentlessly was when we went to see that live action Attack on Titan movie. Do you remember oh. that? I, Someone hushed you yeah, in that? Yeah. A guy in front of me turned around and he was like, so are you going to talk the whole time? And I was like, oh, sorry. Were you enjoying this piece of crap? At the end of the movie, me and me and our friend Zach like hugged like another person because we were all upset. Like, what the fuck was that? And we were like, let's all have a group hug. That I don't know why. Was- that sucked. Bad. <laughs> I've heard horrible things about that movie. <sighs> There's a part two to that movie that we never watched. <gasps> there is. Is it as good as It Chapter Two? There, that one was a meme for a hot second. It be- was because like it. What was it? Is it like it got it froze on one frame or something? Yeah. No, the, the subtitles were wrong with what was happening. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, fun. Yeah. Anyways, that's what we got for you this episode. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a weird one September. What a, what a good episode. It's gonna be a weird one in September. It Chapter Two mm. and. Hustlers. I'll, I'll bring in my goldfinch. Well, Hustlers, we'll talk. We'll rank uh, every song on "Cause I Love You" by Lizzo. Um, that's all I got, uh, Ryan. If people wanted to uh, tell you that Mount Rushmore is good, actually, <laughs> where can people they can go to at Mr. Pip Official and then go fuck themselves. <laughs> Because um, I have no place on my feed. You are for the Mount Rushmore <laughs> defenders. <laughs> You are the Naruto to Mount Rushmore defacing exactly, it. <laughs> and exactly. And everyone's like, get the fuck down.
around there, kid. Why can't we we replace them with and like, then some re- guys, with of the... real icons like Lizzo? Yeah, and, and then one of the person like I takes... don't know a lot about Lizzo. Was that <laughs> a good thing to say? Yeah, yes. Like, okay, pretty good. good. Pretty good. This is people are gonna really like you about this. Okay, be, good. You're gonna be woke Let's king just... now. <laughs> Instead of like like there's four faces of Lizzo. Oh. Like, uh, the, like, okay, now you got to bring it down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, they're, 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 now you sound like you're hiding something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Blizzo and um uh 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 no 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 Jay Z no no Jay Z's bad now. He's got the NFL thing. Not Jay Z, not Jay Z. Um 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 um. Pro Jared, there you go. Pro Jared, yeah yeah yeah. No damn it no. Carrie, where can people find me on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at K A R underscore E Lyles L Y L E S, or you can find me on Letterbox by just searching my first name K A R R. Yeah, that hot branding there. Mm-hmm. On the, you didn't. I, we, I always say that you got on the remember, ground floor, but you didn't get on the ground. Remember, floor. like four months ago, where George on this podcast said he was going to get a letterbox. letterbox. Yeah, that's why I brought it up because I wanted to confront uh, you about that. I don't know why. I guess I don't. I'm know gonna why. make. I'm gonna make that like um, uh, three billboards be like three. <laughs> <laughs> Three months. Still no, still no letterbox. Why George <laughs> Cruz? Oh man, what a pull! Three billboards f- feels like forever ago. Yeah, that yeah. was that was I where I first that was where I first saw Samara Weaving from Ready or Not. She plays. Oh. The, she plays. Did either of you ever see that movie? I didn't. I no. still haven't seen Three oh. Billboards, but I will She's make in a it. Three Billboards meme. <laughs> you know what I also thought about recently? Why haven't we seen the Gallows sequel? It's been filmed. We know it's been filmed. But <laughs> wait, what? Yeah, it's Are been you filmed. It's just locked in a crate. No, like no, 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 no. Yeah, it came out like Blade Disgusting. Like had to feel like the Gallows has been secretly filmed. And it's are they gonna Blair Witch it? Like probably. Fucking, like it's called. Like, Does it still take place in Nebraska? It better. <laughs> I almost rewatched The Gallows. Nope. I want to rewatch it so badly. I don't know why. It's bad. I mean, I bought it for George. Does, yep. Do I haven't still opened have it. it yet. <laughs> yeah, I have it though. I, I, uh, man, I, I was I fully convinced myself that you probably sold it or something. God, the I one, have, but I don't the think one so. time we don't record at George's apartment. It's true. We'll talk about The Gallows and his copy of it. Anyways, you can find me at jcruzalvers26 if you can rate. Oh, actually, I think. People actually have rated and reviewed this show. I want to give a shout out to you. Thank you so much for rating and reviewing the show. People have actually done it. It's really, really nice. I really much appreciate it. So thank you for supporting the show and for listening to us talk about fucking the Hokage, Mount Rushmore. Um, like we derail and not talk about movies. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's almost like we didn't have a lot of material to talk wow. about. That's crazy, right? I can't believe we're going to talk about Mount Rushmore for like two hours next month. <laughs> Um, so it chapter two is great, but Ryan, let's really talk about your experience. Let's talk about let's talk about the Grand Canyon. Let's talk about the police officer who got me down from the Mount Rushmore, and I had ramen with him, and we had a really good heart to heart. He told me to believe in myself and chase my dreams. Be the god. Anyways, that's gonna do it for this episode. Until next time, we'll see you then. Bye bye.